probably a couple years now. 10 years now. Since I was 12. For 11 years. Probably close to 15 years now. I started back in 1973. I guess a couple years ago, uh, I really felt in my heart that it was time to, to be modest. I was taught that it was very important, and later as I wore it, I became convicted that there was a lot of advantages to it. We lived in a Orthodox Jewish uh, environment, and I wanted to make sure that I didn't offend anyone. First Corinthians 11, it said to have your head covered, and it meant a literal material head covering. And then I also found it reinforced in the example of the bitter waters in the temple in the Torah. I came under conviction when a friend of mine um, named Reed Marino showed, opened the scriptures to me and showed me um, Corinthians 11. The scripture was also talking about a woman having a covering. And so we studied together and came to the conclusion that this was something for women to be submissive to Yahweh. It identifies to a certain degree that you are a follower of the scriptures. This is um, a declaration that I am making not only to the visible world but to the invisible world as well that I am blood-bought and that I, I accept who God has created me to be. Your hair is your beauty and so I want to cover that. I, I don't want to flock you know, everything out but uh, I like to keep myself covered and modest. A head covering, first of all, I think does put it a modesty aspect to what how you're acting and it re constantly reminds you personally that people are watching you because you have a head covering. Yeah, I've had a lot of people come up to me and ask me why and it's not biblical, it's not scriptural, um, a lot of controversy in it, but uh, I think that you just have to know how to explain it. What does it mean to you? What does it mean in your heart? What does the scripture say about it? And what does it mean to you when you wear one? Absolutely. Um, people want to know why I wear a head covering and it gives me a great way to share my testimony and my faith in Messiah. I also think there's a respect for me as a woman. I don't think most people realize what I'm doing. Uh, even, even in church it takes a while for them to realize that, hey, you never, I never see you without your head covered. <laughs> no one has really come out and said anything to me about, you know, what they, what their thoughts or feelings are on it. Yes. Yes, definitely. We went to uh, Sturgis one time for the motorcycle rally, and um, it was incredible the difference in wearing a head covering and a dress and some of the really disgusting, <laughs> filthy people that did all the things that they did up there would open doors for me and call me ma'am and would be kind to me and my children. And as soon as I put on a pair of pants to go riding with my husband, it completely changed. I could feel uh, there was no more respect for me at all. Oh, most definitely. Uh, since I started dressing modestly and wearing the head covering, I've been treated as a woman and a, and a lovely person and not an object. Gentlemen, men treat me more like a lady. There's no doubt about it. They make special exceptions for me, knowing that I'm taking this extra precaution. They think it's beautiful. They, they say, wow, you know, you don't see that all the time. It looks beautiful. And some people, you know, they come at you, but a lot of people enjoy it. A lot of people enjoy seeing it. They either want to know why I wear a head covering. Am I Catholic or am I Mennonite? Probably about how nice it looks. When I was working, it it got a lot of comments. Um, I At one job, all of the people called me Sister Michael. At another job, um, it almost became a point of contention where I had to... Uh, I had to say, you know, this is this is my religious uh, freedom. People have come up to me and said, we know you're a follower of the scriptures because you have a head covering on. It separates you from other people and yet it draws people to you at the same time because people want to know why. A lot of people, they like it and some people don't, but I guess they're not, they're not there yet. They're not in that step yet. You know, we have we want, we're striving to go back to biblical days, to to way the Torah told us to be like. No one has ever criticized me for wearing it. I've had a few uh, negative comments, usually from women who are more in a uh, professional setting. They um, consider me to be uh, a 
slave to my husband and um, to my religion, which I don't have any of. And uh, so, yeah, I do get a few, but not mostly I don't. Once you start being modest, when you're not, you feel so naked. Um, even if it's just your hair not covered, or if you're not wearing a skirt, or you know, you just get so used to that, you feel comfortable with it. It's it's like a it's like a blanket when a kid has their blanket when they're a baby, and that's how I feel with this. I feel very comforted when I'm wearing it. If I go outside without it, I feel like I've gone out without my shirt on. Just do it. Just do it. I mean, once you put it on, you don't want to take it off. What's the, I mean, you'll wear it one day, you want to wear it the next day and the next day. And even if you have a bad hair day, you know, you just put it on right away. If you're young, just wait. Don't, don't put it on for the wrong reasons because everyone else is doing it or because you don't know. Wait till you find him tell you it's time to cover up. It's time to be modest. It's, it's time for him to reveal something to you. And it could start with, you know, not wearing short shorts or, you know, spaghetti straps, not showing off your body, also, you know, your hair. And it's, it's a veil. It's just covering yourself, covering your heart, guarding your heart. And when you feel it's ready, when he tells you it's ready, um, that's the time when you should do it. It's a headship thing. I would definitely recommend it. Get a shot and see what kind of changes they might notice. It is never a hardship to submit to God's Word. And that the blessing that comes out of obeying in little things um, is so huge. When we are faithful in small things, He gives us big things. You're going to fight it every day of your life. It's not something easy, but our life lived for Yahweh is not easy anyway. And He didn't call us to be like everyone else. He called us to suffer and to be identified with Him in our suffering. And Oh, a head covering is a pretty small suffering in comparison to what possibly is ahead of us. The epitome is dressing modestly, humbly, meekly, cheerfully, womanly. Uh, remember that you're most, most of you that will hear this are mothers. You're a mother, you're not a model. And you're supposed to uh, project all of these things to your children, your family, and your community. When I wear one, it's not only covering your hair, your beauty, your, yourself, your inner sides, but people say, like this lady told me, you can't wear one, you're not married. You have to be married to wear one. And I told her, well, you know what, I'm not married, but I'm still humbling myself because he's my father and he's my covering. So therefore, I want to cover myself. I want to save myself. This is not something where he's trying to subject me to to something, to some kind of rule. This is something that actually brings me out of a, of a, a cursed and fallen world. And, um, for me, it's, it's a sign of authority, even more than a sign of, of submission, because it speaks to the angels. When I started wearing one at my congregation about, you know, three, three women started and then four women started, so it kind of, you know, helped a lot of other people to start wearing it and uh, covering their hair and and even uh, I did a little class on what is modesty with, with the young girls and you know not, not to be like everybody else because we're different we're we're supposed to be holy we're supposed to be set apart we're not supposed to look like the world or the next girl around the corner we're supposed to be different you know there's rules for eating there's rules for dressing there's rules for, there's rules for everything they're there to keep us safe to guideline us to keep us in the Torah and you know you could be stepping on the line you could be over it behind it but it doesn't make you more holy than anybody else he meets you, he meets you where you're at i think that a head covering is the absolutely most amazing testimony a woman can have besides the seat seats and i think that it really sets us apart people recognize you as another believer by your head covering and you won't understand the power and the testimony of it until you actually wear a head covering. There's just no way to totally describe it if you've never worn a head covering. He gave us the head covering for a reason, and that reason is, is to bless us and enrich us and to, um, and to help us to see, see his order of things. It changes your whole outlook. When you put a head covering on, it, you have to pay attention to what you're doing all the time. It's a warning to yourself. It's a reminder. 
I am a representative of someone besides just me. And you start paying attention to how you treat your husband, how you treat your children. You don't yell at your children in public. You, you learn to control yourself because it's not just about you.